and a controversial process called reconciliation. Well, Harry Reid and the Democrats try the same thing to push cap and trade through, which a lot of small businesses tell us could be even worse than Obamacare for their bottom lines. Chris Horner from the Competitive Enterprise Institute is the author of Power Grab, How Obama's Green Policies Are Going to Steal Your Freedom, Bankrupt America. He joins us now from Washington, D.C. So, uh, Chris, first of all, a little political. You're, you're great in the numbers and the stats and all that, but a little bit on politics. Harry Reid. Uh, the guy's up for uh, re-election. It's going to be a real tough election. His constituents don't like cap and trade very much, particularly those who are mounting against him. Is he really going to push for this thing and cut his own throat? Well, it seems that Harry Reid has made the calculation that uh, many members have made in his caucus, which is uh, the same one they made before the health care vote. Look, we're, we're all in and we're in trouble in the fall. We might as well get a long time wish list item out of this. And now they're saying, well, now you're really all in and you dug deeper. You might as well get the long held wish of a cap and trade energy tax slash rationing scheme. So as of Monday, a report came out that he has decided to circumvent the Senate, suspend the Senate committee process again, as he did with health care, write the bill himself behind closed mm. doors, as you indicated, because it was going to see the cap and trade bill would impact about every aspect of your, your lives. So it was going to go to six Senate committees, including that troublesome Senate Finance Committee, which writes right. tax law. So he decided to do it himself. And since Thursday has been having closed door meetings, as has the White House, with constituency groups and green pressure groups asking them, what do you need to support this? But you and your viewers, by the way, are not at the table. No, no, we're not at the table. That's for sure. But reconciliation split the country in half on health care. I mean, mm -hmm. half of the country, they haven't, they haven't gotten any bump in the polls, at least, in terms of people coming over to this, their side on health care. What makes them think that cap and trade would do any less? Uh, I, I think the calculation is, look, we're going to take our lumps and we are all in. We might as well get what is. Remember, right. their goal has always been to organize society. This is the latest excuse. They might as well throw all in because, again, they do feel they're going to take a beating thanks to the health care takeover. Why not just double down with a energy sector takeover? Even if it doesn't make economics. Well, we've got a lot of people that have come on scoreboard, a lot of small business people who say that the cost of energy is one of the biggest components of their cost right. of doing business. And it's, it, it could drive a number of people out of business. So why are people like Lindsey Graham, Republican Lindsey Graham, right. in favor of his version of cap and trade? Uh, he has a, a very influential constituent in General Electric, which has retooled its business lines to benefit from governmental policy favors, I particularly see. this scheme. So Lindsey Graham has also said very wise things like, well, look how well I'm received on college campus now. I couldn't very well take the other position. So we've got a lot of deep thinking going on up here, but you've <laughs> got to dig deep into your wallet. Remember, we have steel jobs in Kentucky from Spain because of their cap and trade scheme. Those jobs won't stay here. They will right. go any manufacturing job, energy intensive jobs. They will flee the country because of well, energy. They may have, they the may have no place to, to go to eventually if Europe does the same thing. No. They may have to go to, you know, no. someplace in uh, Timbuktu. Uh, but the Chamber of uh, Commerce. Mexico, David. Me okay, yes. Mexico. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. They probably will go to Mexico. Chamber of Commerce, I understand, is thought to be anyway. It's not, they haven't come out with a statement, but they have thought to be on board with at least some of the uh, components of Lindsey Graham's plan. No. Right. It's the Cary Graham Lieberman proposal. It will be introduced Monday. It will be kabuki. The bill will be written behind closed doors. So I wouldn't get overly exercised or excited that what they introduce will be the bill. But the chamber is holding itself out to be uh, to be obtained. And they have a history and they have not rolled yet. They are giving the signs that they will roll. And so if you are a remember, the conference rooms in the chamber aren't named after Joe's Plumbing. They're named after the very large uh, dues paying member company. So if you're a member company, let them know your opinion, because the president said cap and trade's purpose is to cause energy prices to skyrocket. That's his word. I know. I know. It's extraordinary. OK. And finally, we can't leave the volcano out of the picture. All of the computer models that this cap and trade bill are based on. Uh, have been applied to the volcanic ash being spewed in the air from the Iceland volcano. And guess what? They're wrong. So once again, we're basing a trillion dollar policy on flawed computer models that screwed up with regard to telling us where the plume was going, right? Right. And remember, this is essentially checker level of computer modeling. We're dealing with a highly complex planet and climate system, which is three level chess. We can't get this right. Our policy is premised on computer models when perfectly good observations would tell you the computer models are proven right. wrong. In case you were wondering about this most expensive tax increase in American history being based on folly. Chris Horner, great to see you again, Chris. Thanks for coming in. On deck you, David. 